panel, Racism Responses in Western Sydney, seeks to explore the limitations of dominant narratives around race and racism and hopes to identify threads of analysis that will better equip those experiencing and struggling against contemporary racism in Western, Australia, Western Sydney in particular and in Australia. Um, so, where to begin with um, this panel? Let's start by actually defining racism. Um, today, we live in a supposedly post-racial world. There seems to be a general consensus that racism is bad. Um, even a group like Reclaim Australia ensure that they are not racist by including people of colour in their demonstrations. Um, this seems to be premised on an understanding of racism simply being an overt act of discrimination or vilification. Uh, I'm going to throw to Alana first on this. What challenges do such predominant views of racism pose to those attempting to establish an, a, an analysis that racism is still alive and is in fact a decisive agent in shaping power and social relations in contemporary Australia? Okay, a small, a small, <laughs> a small question. question. Thank you so much for that. Okay, look, the way I look at it is that post-racism, so the idea that racism is a thing of the past uh, and that we're all living in a kind of a diverse, multicultural, harmonious age, uh, is actually the main framework for which racism actually takes expression. Now you might think that's very odd, you're saying people are saying racism is a thing of the past, so how can you say that has anything to do with racism? And my argument is, well, there's a couple of strands to this argument, but I guess the first thing I want to say about it is that this idea that racism is either a thing of the past or it's, that it's something that's only to do with extremist attitudes, something that comes from the outside that is not somehow inbuilt to our society, has always been a feature of racism. We've always spoken about it as being something bonus, extra, beyond, excessive, right? And if we take that for granted, and, or look at that historically as being the case, or appreciate that to be the case, we can understand that denying racism is actually fundamental to how racism works. And it's particularly acute today, because everybody has understood in the last, sort of, let's say, in the history since the end of the Second World War, is probably the time when this is kind of divided, yeah? That to be racist is not a good thing. And to talk about people in terms of race is a taboo, right? It's not something that we think is good. Most people, it's very, very hard push to find anybody who openly says, I'm a racist. They might say, if they think it's an anonymous poll or something where they're not going to be named, they might admit to having racist views. But you'd be hard pushed to find somebody to say, yes, I'm a racist. But there's always that little but that comes in. The but, dot, dot, dot. I'm not a racist, but. And then they'll come out with this stuff that, to probably everybody in the room here, is seen as racist. But the interesting way in which, which it's framed is that a separation is made between race and other factors that are thought of as maybe culture or nationality or religion. And this is perfectly obvious to us if we look at the way in which Muslims are spoken about today in our societies. Just look at the announcements over the last couple of days when Tony Abbott says, yes, we're going to take more Syrian refugees. And all of a sudden, people are saying, but they, can, they must be Christian. We can't take Muslim refugees. And although, obviously, there are people coming out and saying, you know, we can't start to divide people up among, by religion, the idea that this is even an acceptable view is, uh, is not that highly debated. People would say, yes, but there's always this problem with certain groups that are considered to be uh, beyond the pale. Now, you'll say, but Islam, it's not a religion. Uh, sorry, it's not a race, it's a religion, so I'm not being racist, right? So ultimately, you're saying that this has got nothing to do with race. This is what post-racialism is about. It's saying, but it's not race, it's culture. But it's not race, it's religion. But it's nationality. But it's something else. So we have um, three Muslims to my left. Um, here. <laughs> that was planned. <laughs> no, that was planned. Um, so um, I want to ask any one of you to jump in um, as a group that, that, as Alana points out, have been um, racialized, um, what do you see in terms of the limitations, in terms of how we're defining racism, how we're defining um, diversity? I mean, my, my event I'm organising is called Diversity Fest, but I inherited that name. Um, but, but what are the limitations of, of how we're defining racism in a post-racial world and the limitations of diversity and multiculturalism and how we're responding as a racialized group? Um, I think 
you know, Australia has externally always used the myth of diversity to erase the myth of the, the reality of genocide. So, you know, we constantly hear that, you know, we're one but we're many, you know, Australia's one of those diverse places on, on Earth, which on paper is, you know, we have, you know, this percentage of people have, you know, are either, you know, their parents were born overseas or speak another language. Uh, but again, of course, this is all, you know, uh, about denying, you know, systemic, uh, the systemic nature of, you know, who gets what, who's in power, who makes decisions, who's treating what, which way. And when I, you know, we constantly, like in Australia, we constantly ask the question, is this a racist country, is this a racist country? And I just say, well, you know, just look at something as simple as indigenous uh, health statistics. Like, would we tolerate that happening? Not just to white people, to any other group in society, would we actually tolerate people dying, you know, 10 years, sometimes more, earlier than everyone else? Absolutely not. Would we lock, you know, other people up? Would we have laws to allow other people to be locked up indefinitely for fleeing war and terror? Of course not. So, yeah, I mean, diversity and, you know, this idea of Australian multiculturalism is really the kind of the gloss on, you know, what, what really is, you know, like a horrific kind of racist history.